be discussing about pharmaceuticals, biologicals, and biopharmaceuticals. So starting with uh, our lecture today, the objective of overall lecture is to comprehend uh, what are pharmaceuticals, uh, that uh, how we classify them and categorize them into biopharmaceuticals, biopharmaceutical medicines or biologicals. At the same time, we will try to uh, understand uh, how the field of pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceuticals evolved with the passage of time as well as we'll try to appreciate the impact of recombinant DNA technologies on biopharmaceutical productions. Similarly, we'll try to identify the prevailing and emerging trends which are involved in production of biopharmaceuticals. So to start with, uh, what biopharmaceutical products are. Keeping in view who from the word pharmaceuticals, we all know it as we think of pharmaceuticals directly medicines comes into our mind. So pharmaceutical substances are actually low molecular mass organic chemicals which forms the backbone of our present medicinal therapy. If we take a few examples, uh, aspirin, paracetamol and many other products which are actually originated from many biological sources. Later on, if you want to divide this pharmaceutical, how we could classify, we could divide this pharmaceutical manufacturing into two types. Uh, one is the basic raw material, bulk raw material manufacturing facilities, and other is actually the pharmaceutical industry, which is actually involved in finished product or the formulation of the uh, different pharmaceutical dosage forms and these are actually the products we actually manufacture the products for using the raw material from the bulk manufacturing industry and prepare those as dosage forms different dosage forms for human beings or veterinary consumption or any other consumption uh, if we come up to the point we know it uh, a range of pharmaceutical substances uh, which uh, includes which are mostly are biological substances such as hormones, antibodies, coagulation factors, enzymes, which are actually produced from or isolated from different biological sources. And they were initially classified as biotechnological products. Uh, later on, we also come up to a point that we start doing chemical modification of few naturally occurring substances, which are actually produced during fermentation process and such type and so many semi-synthetic antibiotics which are presently used by all human beings presently. So if you want to now moving towards what basically biopharmaceuticals or biotech medicines or biologicals is. So as per the definition uh, which is given in the European Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences, biopharmaceuticals are such products which are actually protein or nucleic acid based pharmaceutical substances used for therapeutic or in vivo diagnostic purposes, which could be either produced by means other than the direct extraction from the native or biological source means you can easily say that the genetic engineering is involved in such all biopharmaceutical products. The other is the biotechnological medicines or the products of pharmaceutical biotechnology, any product used for therapeutic or in vivo diagnostics purposes, which is produced in full or in part by biotechnological means could be classified under this biotechnological medicines means if we do even some alterations, which based on the biotechnological basis or molecular techniques, we call, we could classify such products as pharmaceutical products, which are produced by the biotechnology. Last but not the least is the biologicals. Normally, viruses, therapeutic serums, toxins, antitoxins, vaccines, blood, plasma, blood components, blood plasma, derivatives, allergenic products, or analogous products, uh, are, which are derived from other things and could be applied for prevention, cure, or treatment of disease uh, in human beings could be classified as biologicals such as we can mention few like coagulating factors and uh, such things. If you want to classify based on the above definitions, if you want to classify 
a few of the products into three parts we could easy, easy categorize these uh, molecules biological molecules into two basic two three basic types which is actually pharmaceuticals or pharmaceutical medicines uh, number one is if we talk of recombinant proteins solely they are surely they are both we could classify them as biopharmaceuticals or biopharmaceutical medicines monoclonal antibodies again the same both are actually biopharmaceuticals or bio could be classified as biopharmaceutical medicine protein ob obtained from direct extraction from native source certainly they would not be biopharmaceuticals as no genetic engineering is involved but uh, they are biotechnological medicines as they are isolated from the direct source gene therapy products both are you could classify them both as biopharmaceuticals and biopharmaceutical medicines antisense oligonucleotide manufacturing by direct chemical synthesis certainly it's a biopharmaceutical but it's not as it's not isolated from any living organism so it would not be classified as biotechnological medicine antisense oligonucleotides produced by enzymatic synthesis certainly they would be both they would come under pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceutical medicine so it's a whole long list which includes both plant-based products peptides antibiotics which could be produced semi-synthetically or isolated from, from any uh, native producer they have come under the virus pharmaceutical medicines tissue-based therapies they would be classified as biotechnological medicine because we would not be using them or we have not altered anything in them using by genetic engineering techniques so moving further let's have a brief overview of our uh, pharma industry history uh, our, we could barely say that uh, our pharma industry is yeah, or global pharma industry is just uh, 60 years old but during this whole period uh, pharma industry has uh, worked a lot uh, and has grown rapidly uh, with uh, present worth of almost 935 billion and presently it is estimated that it would go up to 1170 billion dollars by 2021 uh, till now uh, with a rough estimates also postulated that almost 10,000 pharmaceutical companies are registered globally and out of this uh, almost 100 could be truly classified as international companies the reason behind the biggest reason behind is they manufacture in excess of almost 5000 drugs which are used in various types of treatments so these are the major big companies which are actually involved in the drug manufacturing if you move towards uh, a little historical perspective the major so major advancement uh, in modern pharmaceutical technology or industry could be tracked back in the 20th early 20th century uh, till then we human beings have only four different drugs known for their specific treatments in specific disease conditions number one is digitalis which is was actually extracted from foxglove and uh, known as cardiac stimulant and was treat, used to treat different heart conditions. Later on, Quina Queen, uh, which was actually isolated from Cinchona bark species, roots, barks and roots of the Cinchona species, was used to treat malaria. Later on, Pachyquana, isolated from bark and roots of cephalus species, used to treat dysentery. Similarly, different various mercurial compounds were used to treat syphilis. So this is a brief history that how the pharma industry uh, has evolved with the passage of time. Now moving further, if we go on, uh, the biggest uh, breakthrough came through the Alexander Fleming experiment when he observed that uh, this is actually, this experiment was the basis of the isolation and development of antibiotics for human consumption against different microbial infections. So what was the experiment was that uh, he was culturing stuff co cocci and he found that due to mold growth many of the bacteria was killed and this experiment actually led the way towards the discovery of the drug penicillin and uh, this actually 
penicillin actually help uh, in isolating the things. So moving further, The other developments which actually paved the way towards development of pharma industry was actually the uh, merger of uh, microorganism viruses in combination with the recombinant DNA technology and the bioreactor facilities. These actually combination of both these three, four things help us in producing different bioproducts such as antibiotics, insulins, and many growth hormone and other things. So basically the recombinant BI recombinant DNA technology, bioreactor facilities, and the microorganisms along the, with the viruses assist us in producing different biopharmaceuticals or bioproducts. So coming to how the recombinant DNA uh, technology has impacted biopharmaceutical production. Uh, biopharmaceutical research uh, has been been conducted by many scientists for the many years and they have understood that uh, with the passage of time that many molecular mechanisms underlying the diseases are based upon the host proteins which uh, are either not performing properly or they are disturbed so if we could manipulate with those host proteins uh, which are actually disturbed due to certain diseases we could alleviate the disease condition and such host pr proteins are actually uh, the normal simple proteins which are circulating within the body they are interferons interleukins erythropoietin growth hormone insulin etc so there are many long list of host proteins which are actually known to be underlying various diseases so with the advent of recombinant dna technology and the hybridoma technology uh, scientists overcame this difficulty uh, which uh, previously they were facing that was the scarcity of uh, the biomolecules uh, and the reason behind these all internucleans interferons erythropoietins are secreted at very less quantity within the uh, body so if we want to produce them or isolate them from the normal organisms too difficult because they are secreted in or produce in a very scarce amount. So to in order to cover these all these problems, recombinant DNA technology and hybridoma technology assisted the scientists a lot. So recombinant technology is presently uh, impacting the production of biopharmaceuticals in four ways. Number one is it actually overcomes the problem of source availability. If we have, uh, if we are thinking to produce any biological molecule which is or any biological protein which is expressed within the human being at very scarce quantity uh, with the advent of recombinant biotechnology we can express that protein in any microorganism or a eukaryotic system such as yeast or uh, any human cell so source availability problem has been overcome with the recombinant biotechnology moving further it has also overcome the problem of product safety if we have in the past, we have been isolating the products from our proteins, therapeutic proteins from the cow, from other pigs and other animals. So they're always, or even human being, there were certainly there were problems to have to carry infections from there. Uh, humans were infected by many other viruses of the animals. So uh, product safety issue was resolved with the advent or with the development of recombinant technology techniques. Later on, uh, uh, it also provides alternatives uh, to uh, from direct extraction from inappropriate or dangerous source materials. Uh, there are many examples you have seen that uh, if you talk of follicle stimulating hormone, this is actually uh, isolated initially from the uh, pregnant female urine, and we can easily consider that uh, it's really a inappropriate source to be to isolate FSH uh, which is actually follicle stimulating hormone so uh, genetic engineering techniques have actually assisted us to cover or even if we think of uh, any we want to design a vaccine against some snake venom we could uh, it's really difficult to isolate venom from on the snakes every time so 
these all recombinant technology techniques have assisted us to as an alternative route for producing such compounds which are uh, not easily available or it's inappropriate sources for, or the, from where they are actually isolated uh, those sources are not ap appropriate last but not the least is the these genetic engineering techniques have facilitated uh, scientists to produce engineered therapeutic proteins and these engineered therapeutic proteins actually display uh, clinical advantages uh, over the native proteins uh, just for few examples if you go through this table you can see that uh, we have a multiple uh, have aspects of insulin if you see here uh, so uh, that we have uh, here fast acting and slow acting insulins and we have modified few sequences and this could only be done with the help of uh, engineering techniques and the end rationale is to have some fast acting insulin and some slow acting insulin. Similar is the tissue plasma engine activator. Uh, it's just again a modified few of the three of the five native domains from the TPA were removed and uh, this actually helps in fast acting thrombolytic effects of this TPA. Uh, similarly, if you talk of this on tag of fusion protein, and in this, we are actually fusing the protein of tryptaria toxin with interleukin-2. So if, uh, which actually helps us in uh, specifically targeting the cells which are actually have the interleukin-2 receptors with them. So this is how oh, these modifications actually assist in having better uh, products or better biopharmaceuticals to be used or consumed by the humans. Now, uh, to conclude or to have an overview that uh, what is the present scenario uh, of biopharmaceuticals uh, are and what are the emerging trends or what are the future prospects of biopharmaceuticals. Uh, to be very realistic, uh, by mid of 20th century, almost 150 biopharmaceuticals uh, which are actually produced through biotechnological techniques or recombinant DNA techniques. Uh, they gained approval by the US and EU drug registering authorities. Uh, but, uh, and uh, most of these biopharmaceuticals were actually uh, replacement proteins, means uh, these are such simple replacement proteins such as blood factors, human insulin, growth hormone, and majority of these recombinant proteins were actually produced uh, in E. coli or uh, uh, yeast, that is as service or in few animal cells, animal cell lines such as uh, Chinese hamster's ovary or uh, the baby uh, hamster kidney cells cell lines these are the two cell lines which are normally used by the scientists to have recombinant protein express in them uh, if we talk of now presently at least uh, 500 different potential pharmaceuticals are under clinical trial uh, and vast majority of them are actually the vaccines and monoclonal antibodies uh, on the other hand we also have in line uh, many other uh, nucleic acid based products uh, evolve towards as future therapeutic inventions and they include the antisense uh, aptamers RNAi based products so these are all, most of these are also again under clinical trials and in future we could have them as thera therapeutic interventions last but not the least is actually the plant based transgenic proteins or we normally call them as oral vaccines uh, scientists are working on them and we could potentially have such oral vaccines in future too so to have a little brief on various things uh, what are the future trends emerging trends which are on the way and how people are working i just figure out few pictures uh, to make you elaborate how recombinant vaccines, monoclonal antibodies, and these are prepared 
and how they help us in developing certain therapeutic interventions to treat the disease. If we come up with the uh, certainly with the vaccine, talk of the vaccines. Say for example, we have hepatitis B vaccine uh, virus here. It's a DNA virus. We all know it. And if we want to produce uh, HB antigens out of it, what we would do is uh, uh, we will be cloning this HB antigen gene into a recombinant plasmid, which could express this uh, recombinant HB antigen DNA in it. So what we do, we have a bacterium out of which we cut submit with a restriction enzyme and we clone this HB antigen gene to this plasmid to make a recombinant plasmid. We transfer this recombinant plasmid into yeast to express this recombinant plasmid and it will produce HB antigen and for a longer industrial scale we will do a uh, culture this recombinant yeast in fermentation tank and it will produce the recombinant proteins which are actually HBS Vac uh, antigens uh, and they would be actually formulated and packed to have HBS B vaccine. So, on the coming towards monoclonal antibodies, we all know if, if you want to create, generate monoclonal antibodies against certain antigen, well, the first step is immunization. We immunize the mice with the antigen, and antibody forming would express the antibodies. What we do, we will the next step is we will isolate the immune cells and we will third step is we will isolate the tumor cells and now comes the technique of hybridoma we actually we fuse these two cells that is the uh, immune cell and the tumor cell to make a hybridoma cell and this hybridoma cell has a characteristic to create uh, or secrete antibodies so the next is to screen all these hybridoma cells and this screening is done using the antigen we have, have uh, used to create these antibodies or and these antibody producing hybridoma cells are screened and later on we'll select one clone uh, for clonal expansion to generate monoclonal antibodies from that single clone next is which is actually the emerging uh, technique for is bioengineered tissues. Uh, this could be easily explained that if in a, uh, we have a, a scar uh, uh, and this scar could be repaired with uh, uh, cells, healthy cells taken from different part of a patient, same patient, so that it's an autologous uh, replacement of cell and those cells onto the scar and should regenerate and it would be repaired so there would be this type of work is also underway and trials in different uh, the fourth is the rna interference uh, this is an interesting phenomena uh, so it was initially identified in many, many organisms including the plants and microorganisms but now it's even observed in humans so uh, what happens is we have a double-stranded rna or a, uh, hairpin loop forming RNA. There is an enzyme or a complex called Dicer which actually breaks or the strands into single RNA. And this ICI RNA actually forms a complex with risk. And this risk actually, this along with this single strand RNA would join to the mRNA specifically and target this mRNA for silencing. What happens is this risk along with the SIRNA would make a complex with the mRNA and this complex would actually initiate the degradation of the target mRNA. In this way the gene silencing would take place and these techniques could be even applied to treat various diseases uh, in humans. So, so if we move further is uh, further three, four techniques, which are nowadays are of crucial importance, is number one is the adult cell, adult stem cell therapy. Similarly, the tissue engineering, uh, all human beings uh, have 
problems of immunity if we could tra we tra get transferred with cells from other human beings. So in order to uh, get a uh, lesser immunological response, adult, adult stem cell therapy is used a lot more time. What happens is we have these cells which are actually adult stem cells in various tissues uh, such as uh, neurons, stem cells, bone marrow, skeletal muscle or uh, many other cells, cardiac cells even. Uh, we could isolate these adult stem cells which have a capacity to, to regenerate in other cells of the same lineage and uh, we could use those cells to repair the repair the different deficient organs which are not performing properly now. So these uh, stem cells could be used to treat various uh, diseases. Uh, and we don't have any, in other words, we don't have any social restriction or we don't have any uh, restrictions to use as a therapy. While moving towards embryonic stem cells, these are actually uh, we have uh, various ethical issues with uh, these embryonic stem cells presently. They are not allowed to be used. Uh, to talk of embryonic stem cell therapy, actually it starts with the step that is actually in vitro fertilization of the egg. And after five to seven days, we, uh, it's a uh, site is formed. And from the inner, the third step is from the inner mass, we actually isolate these. Uh, embryonic stem cells. Later on, we culture these embryonic stem cells, and the step is they could these embryonic stem cells could be again regenerated into or differentiated into any type uh, where we want to uh, repair the organ organ of an any individual. Uh, this is the last second last is the emerging trend in via pharmaceutical. This is the phase therapy. If we talk of the phase therapy, this is actually uh, in terms of uh, antibiotic resistance. We all know that uh, human individuals or that presently the global antibiotic resistance is taking place globally. And we also know that, that uh, phages are actually such viruses which could infect uh, the bacteria to kill them. On the same basis, what we have, uh, scientists have proposed and using that, that they, they, we have an antibiotic resistance patient. Uh, before antibiotic, there are many microorganisms, and if this individual is resistant to any antibiotic, there, and we give the antibiotic, there would be no effect, and the bacterial count remains. While if, in the other case, if we have antibiotic resistance infection in an individual, and we have a phase therapy for that, we do a patient is infected with bacteria and we give the phage and the phage would, would do the phage would kill those bacteriums and once there is no bacterium available against which those phages are effective uh, they would certainly die off as these are again phages are viruses and if there's no cell available for those for those phages to replicate they will certainly die off and along with the bacteria as it uh, finishes within the body Last but not the least is the biochip. This is an interesting concept. Uh, biochips are actually synthetic made, human made chips. And uh, even Bill Gates is presently working on this. And uh, the interesting fact is these actual biochips are uh, in planted, implanted under the skin. Like here it is, they have done it. And these biochips could be used for RFI, RFID screening or tagging of individuals as well as these biochips used to get uh, monitoring of certain hormones with, or enzymes within the body or even if they are loaded with certain drugs they could even transmit or diffuse drug into the body in a conscious manner. So most people are working, scientists are working on biochips that could be used as a drug source or as a monitoring equipment within the body uh, as well as tagging of individuals. So to end with uh, this presentation, 
we are now able to understand what pharmaceutical compounds and uh, how we could classify and compare amongst the biopharmaceuticals and the biotech medicines and biologicals. Similarly, we assimilated what uh, and how the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical uh, field progress with the passage of time. And later on, we discussed how the recombinant DNA technologies uh, actually paved the way in developing biopharmaceuticals and what are the different emerging strategies uh, which are actually now coming way towards human beings to be utilized as therapeutic interventions or the various biopharmaceuticals which are under clinical trials. So uh, thanks for today and hope to see you tomorrow.